so I have a comment and a legitimate question. Um, the comment being, you know, while there's a lot of things I, I disagree with, with you saying, um, but I definitely agree with your opinions on how culture uh, is ruining the black community and why blacks don't graduate from high school due to culture. I think there's an element that you might be missing, um, and I'm not sure if you brought it up before. Um, so, you know, in the late 60s, early 70s, or late 70s, early 80s, you know, when CIA introduced crack into the black community, um, which started a snowball effect of, you know, blacks being overly criminalized for drug possessions, black fathers leaving the home and not sticking around, which led into, you know, in the 80s of uh, black children being, you know, being brought up without uh, fathers, with mothers not being able to, like, give them proper discipline. And while I do agree today that black communities suffer, um, well, for not having fathers in, the house, fathers in the household, but equally due to the culture around them, like, I suffer from it myself. You know, if a black person wants to be educated in, you know, the hood, we get called, you know, house Negroes and, you know, Uncle Toms, you know, if I want to better myself. And, but I was, you know, the element of originally introducing crack into those communities, which eliminated fathers from the home, I think those still have effects today. And while I agree that there isn't systemic racism keeping black people down now, I think the triggers that happened back then still affect us today. Okay, so obviously past effects present, no question. The question is who committed the injustice and who should be punished for it? As far as the CIA introducing crack in the black community, I'm going to plead ignorance on this one because I have no idea whether that's true. Okay, but, it's, it, but I, I will say that when it comes to single motherhood in the black community, that did not start in the 1980s with crack. That started in, in the mid-60s with the increase in welfare. The, the increase in the welfare state dramatically increased the level of single motherhood in the black community. It was 20% around 1960. Today, it's in excess of 70%. Yeah. And that's, and again, I don't think that the, the crack epidemic can actually explain all of that because the crack epidemic really lasted from like the early 80s to basically the early 90s. And you've seen it continue, the single mother has continued to grow actually uh, in the black community, sort of stabilized now, but it's, it continued to grow for a long while after that. Also, I think it's worthwhile noting that when we say things like, you know, somebody introduced crack into the black community, Whoever, quote unquote, introduced crack into the black community, and again, I have no information to substantiate your theory, but the, it is individuals who take crack, right? Unless you are forcibly being injected with crack, then you have to make the choice to, to take the crack in the first place. And it's also worth noting that there are a lot of black legislators in the inner city who are looking for harsher sentences on crack cocaine, specifically because it was an epidemic in the inner city and was ruining a lot of lives. So. The, the only way I think that, you, that when it comes to the, the single greatest intergenerational poverty statistic, uh, the, the only way to walk this back is not through reparations, I think. It's through a, a it really is through culture. It's through reinculcating the idea that fathers need to stick around and you're a bastard if you don't stick around after Absolutely. you father a child. Absolutely. So my question. And that's true for white, black, or green. It doesn't matter to me. If you're, I, I'm a dad of two. You abandon your kids, you are just the worst kind of piece of garbage. Absolutely. So my question. Um, you know, I started getting involved in, so to speak, right-leaning issues after Milo came to Berkeley. I got assaulted by an Antifa member. He tried to set me on fire with a lit flare. He called me a Nazi. Just today, I got called a you Nazi. You don't look like a Nazi. I got to tell no, you. No, no, no. Uh, just today, I got called a Nazi, a fascist, and I consider myself a left-leaning liberal centrist. Um, now, with that said, um, MAGA crew has shown me so much love in these past eight months. Um, everyone I've... Everyone I've met has been reasonable, opened up their homes to me. We've had wonderful discourse. So my, my question now is, as a person who, like I said, considers myself a liberal, um, and I interact with people, you know, on the right and MAGA crew, I still have people in my own personal community that, you know, say that, oh, you're, you're talking to white, you're, you're supporting white supremacy, you know, you're talking to Nazis, you're supporting them. What would you say to a person like me who is open to discourse mm -hmm. uh, and people of all sides, how would you combat, or at least how would you approach people who come with me with hate and saying like, no, no, you're a bad person because you're hanging out with these people. Well, how again, should I, I approach them? So I have a basic rule on this, and it's the same, again, regardless of color, because I've said this to people of every color. If somebody calls you a racist or a bigot based on no evidence, this makes them a bad person, and you have every right to say so. They need to actually cite evidence for why you're a racist or a bigot or a bad person before they can call you that. It needs to actually be justified. And you have every rationale to walk away from that conversation thinking that person is the worst person if they can't explain to you what you've done wrong and why what you've done is so terrible. Okay, that, that works for me. Thanks so much. Thank you so much.